Okay, good evening, everyone. Tony Gonzalez, Planning Board Chair, calling to meet, calling the meeting together for June 7th, the Planning Board meeting. Um, we'll start with a roll call of the board members. Larry Hassan. Here. James Sweeney. Here. Farida Das. Here. And it's just me, Tony Gonzalez, so there's a four-person board. Um, Pam, quickly, what does that mean for tonight? Um, anything that is a return to the ZBA or a site plan approval must receive all four votes. Okay. Anything less than that, the motion fails. Thank you. Also in attendance, Rob May, Director of the Planning Department, Chief Williams, and Evan Sears. Okay. Um, few housekeeping items. Uh, the agenda has changed. That went out earlier today. Uh, number three. Well, first of all, number two, permission to return to ZBA 1449 Main Street is continued to August. So if you're here for that applicant, it won't be heard tonight. The next one is return to ZBA 6870 Field Street has been withdrawn. So those two are removed from the agenda for this evening. And Madam Chair, the Belgravia was oh, also continued to 8-2. Belgravia, what number was that, Pam? Uh, that's on the top, because he had requested a continuance on quite the, early on, so. Belgravia, my poor old eyes do not see it. So uh, um, it is, it's right underneath. Oh, got it. Yep. There it is, yep. Plot two, Bill Gabriel Ave. Continues to eight two. Okay. So on the agenda for tonight, we have uh, permission to return to ZBA, Amelia States. We have site plan approval, 143 route 260, plot 60 dash nine, site plan approval. We have site plan approval for 93 Pleasant Street. And uh, last one is definitive subdivision 49 Keswick Road. So first we will start with reviewing and acceptance of the meetings from May 3rd. Did everyone have a chance to review those? Yes. Is there a motion to accept the minutes? Motion to accept minutes from May 3rd. Second. Okay. Roll call, Larry Hassan? Yes. James Sweeney? Yes. Rita Das? Yes. Tony Gonzalez, yes. Okay, thank you. Um, no ANRs, right, Pam? Uh, there are none. There is one um, subdivision plan for 135 Elliott Street, so if you will stop in and probably not until the first of the week because I'll type up whatever comes out of this meeting and okay. you can stop in at one day. I'll let you know. All right. And my apologies. I have to back up and read this statement. I got ahead of myself here since this is a recorded meeting on Zoom. This meeting is being recorded recorded in accordance with the government order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, general law chapter 38, section 20. Real-time public participation and comment can be addressed to the planning board utilizing the Zoom virtual meeting software for remote access. This application will allow users to view the meeting and send a comment or question to the chair via the question and answer function. Submitted text comments will be read into the record. For those of you joining by phone, press star nine. If you wanna ask a question, please raise your hand. A copy of this recording will be on the city's web pages. All votes will be done via roll call to ensure account accuracy. Okay, sorry about that guys. All right. Um, you going to do the lot releases, Pam? Uh, yes, we have a request from Charlie Macy um, to release lots three, four, five, seven, 14, 15, and 16 on Cypress Drive. Um, as you can see with all the information that was put online, all the um, Infrastructure is in the road. It has all been inspected. And 
the base course has been put on the road. So he's looking to at least release these so he can start building the houses. Okay. And I received a call from Ward 1 Councilor Tom Minicello, and he apologized, but it's budget hearings tonight, and he wanted to be on record as in favor of this. He said that he's been working closely with both um, Charlie and the neighbors. Okay. Sounds good. I do you see um, Councilor Minicello in the audience? I am going to. Oh, he was going to try to try to bring him up as a panelist. Yeah, he's got his. There he is. He when he raised his hand, he moved. Locations. He did. He moved to the top. Yes. Hi there. How are you? Good, Tom. How are you? I'm um, okay. I'm. I'm driving so i'm really not doing what i'm supposed to be doing but i did, I did want to tune in i'm on my way <clears throat> to the budget hearings as Pam mentioned um and um i do want to you know state for the record that uh, i did meet with all the neighbors well many many of the neighbors over um, off of cyprus and um and talked and met with charlie and um you know charlie's been doing um what he said he would do and he's been cooperating and i think that he is a uh, and he's been um, very receptive to suggestion, and um, I, I, I have feel confident that we can work with Charlie because he's been, um, I think, doing a pretty good job over there. And uh, you know, I am in favor of releasing those lots. Uh, okay. If the board is inclined. All right. Thank you for that. Anything else from board members? Is there a motion? Motion to release, release lots, Cypress Drive, lots three, four, five, seven, 14, 15, 16. A second. Okay. All right, roll call vote. Larry Hassan? Yes. James Sweeney? Yes. Rita Das? Yes. Monica Gonzalez, yes. <clears throat> All right, thank you. And moving on, Augusta State. Okay, Augusta State. Um, this one's a little different. The um, property's being sold and the oh, new owner is requesting lots 1, 2, 13, 14, and 15 on Augusta and lot 3 on Cross. All these lots exist now on, um, on current pavement that part of the road is already in. So what he wants to do is start building these houses and then that way he'll be able to have the funding to start the roadway, road work for the rest of it. So there's no letters on this, no nothing. These exist on, ex, on existing roadway and utilities are already in the road. All right. So Pam, just to, to be clear, What's proposed in these lots does not require any infrastructure? It does not. The, the water and sewer is already in to service these lots. They'll okay. just be bringing parcels in as a new connection. But gotcha. the remainder of the project that you approved is all new infrastructure and all new roadway. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Is there a motion? Motion to approve lots Augusta Estates 1, 2, 13, 14, and 15 Augusta Ave and lot 3 cross slash Augusta. Second. Okay, roll call. Larry Hassan? Yes. James Sweeney? Yes. Rita Das? Yes. Tony Gonzalez? Yes. <laughs> All right. Lot release. Okay. Oh, one more. Finally, 42 Quincy. North Quincy. Um, this was the existing house on North Quincy, Jim Morrissey had subdivided off the property and we held the original house. The three new houses are already up. The, um, I received all the letters from Water Sewer and I received a letter from Highway on the paving in the road that he needed to do. And this will be the final release. 
Any questions? Is there a motion? Motion to release 42 Quincy Street. Second. Roll call vote. Larry Hassan? Yes. James Sweeney? Yes. Rita Das? Yes. Tony Gonzalez? Yes. All right. Thank you. So now we're moving on to proposed zoning change. Um, this piece is a tad bit confusing. Um, who would like to explain <coughs> this situation for the board and public, I guess? Rob? Did you receive the email that I sent? Later, mm, have, late this afternoon. I haven't with, been back in my emails in about an hour or so. Sort of an explanation or a... Okay, you want to take a stab at it then? Why don't you take, yeah, if, read that email. Okay, so the there's two orders. One is number 285 or 275. And that was recommended favorable by the ordinance committee to the full city council. And it deals with 2728. Section 2728. And the change would be, so it's 2728 zero or O. That change would remove the provision for outdoor seasonal seating from C1 zones. That's the change. The change they're proposing to 2729-3G will remove the provision for outdoor seating as a special permitted use. The change for 27-3-I deletes I in its entirety and I had to do with zoning board. So what happens here is Zoning is a cumulative, so if you allow it in an I-1, you get to do it in an I-2 or an I-3. If it's only allowed in an I-2, then you can't do it in an I-1. The part of this that was tabled was it, it would allow for outdoor seating in C2. So what they tabled was number, what's listed as number one for you. Mm -hmm. Everything was being removed from what's number two. I don't think I, yeah. You, <laughs> I don't think I made that any better. <laughs> Can I take a crack at this? Yes, please. <laughs> Um, two years ago, at the beginning of COVID, um, Councillor Thompson with um, uh, had introduced a, a zoning ordinance to allow for outdoor dining, which had not been um, really permitted in the city before, or at least not specifically named in the ordinance. And uh, the building department, who is responsible for enforcing these ordinances, has always um, gone by the rule that if it's not listed, then it's not allowed. And so we worked through the zoning process. We amended the code. We allowed for outdoor dining in a C1 zone, which would allow it in C1, C2, C3. Now, two years later, um, a city councilor has come up and I think although I have not heard this from the city councilor, we really don't know what he's trying to accomplish. We think he's trying to put it back into the ordinance. Sorry, Siri. Um, so but it's really confusing in, in what they're trying to do. And furthermore, the, one of the, one of the, uh, motions was passed and another one was tabled. 
So what they're ending up doing is prohibiting outdoor dining anywhere. So we are recommending that you uh, re refer this back to the ordinance committee unfavorably, and we can try to um, deal with it on the city council level rather than trying to amend something here in our um, uh, planning board meeting. Okay, let me just ask a couple questions because it is very confusing. So do you think the counselor's trying to keep the outdoor dining or remove it? I think he's trying to keep the outdoor dining. He's just put it in the wrong spot. Okay. Um, Chief Williams, you still there? Chief Williams? He's on a call. Oh, there he goes. Oh. Hi, um, have you heard of any issues, safety issues, fire issues, or any harm with the outdoor dining that we've had since the pandemic? No, we haven't. Uh, I mean, we've had a couple of speed bumps with some safety issues, but nothing that haven't been curable. I'm sorry, my computer keeps going in and out. Oh. Um, but no, there, there's none um, that I'm aware of. We really don't have any outdoor dining right now that I'm aware of. Um, this well, we can't, we do it like Brax and places like that. And I'm actually in favor of that. It's additional revenue, not only for the city, but for the business owners and other larger cities are doing. So I'm glad to hear that clarification that the counselor is not trying to remove it. He's just trying to put it in the right spot. Did I follow you, Rob? I think he's trying to put it in the right spot, but he's mistaken as to where he's, he's putting it. Okay. I have a question. Uh, so, Rob, in this proposed change, we're, we're looking to start this at the C2 zone and then move it up to the three. Is that the suggestion about the C1? Well, um, what, what you have in front of you and the only motion uh, uh, amendment that is alive right now would prohibit outdoor dining, period. So if we if we approve this, that prohibits outdoor dining. Yes. Okay. Thank you. And so, um, if I finish, we so we need to do a roll call vote on one and two, or is one tabled and off this agenda? Um, Pam, which one is, is one off the agenda or number two off the agenda? Or do you have them grouped together on the? No, so the first one is the one that was off the agenda, the one that got tabled by. Okay, so the second one, I don't have the uh, uh, agenda in front of me, so I don't know what number it is, but it's that second one that we need to refer unfavorably. And just, you know, as a safeguard, our, our re what we're doing is a recommendation. Yeah, I, would, I strongly agree with that. Because the first, the first one, the one they tabled, would be the one where they put it into the C two. Okay. So the one second one is removing it from C one. So planning board members, one is off the agenda. We're going to vote on number two. Now I'll open it up to um, questions for the planning board. If there are any others, I don't have any more questions on it. Um, I'm. I, I think it's a good idea to have the outdoor seating. I, I'm a little confused about why there's, there's a concern with even outdoor seating at all. I mean, don't we have some outdoor areas that might not be in these areas that need all the barriers and all that already? So it um, doesn't make sense to me, but not right. it's supposed to make like, sense. Uh, um, Brazil Grill over on the east side has a beautiful outdoor dining part, you know. There's a lot of nice outdoor dining areas and I would encourage more if restaurants had the space to do so. So, um, sorry, I guess my clarification would be, we're trying to restructure this, but this might not be the correct restructure uh, amendment or proposal. Is that kind of what the assumption is on the second piece here? 
Correct. Correct. Okay. So, Madam Chair, I do have another question. If sure. if we deny this, or do we send this back for a restructure? Right? Because if we deny it, that does that leave leave this hanging in the wind? No, I mean, we are completely advisory. So even if you said a hundred percent, we we love this, they could still vote against it. So it doesn't. We don't. We don't matter. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. okay. Um, any other questions for planning board? Is this open to the public, ma'am? Sorry. Yeah. Oh, sorry, I was talking on mute. Oh, so this ahead. is this is just the zoning change, right? This is like yeah, if we approve. Uh, what going to happen next? The zoning, uh, when it, when an ordinance amendment is introduced, uh, it's referred by city council to two different places. The first is the ordinance committee, which is a committee of city council. And the second place it's referred to is the planning board because it's a zoning ordinance. And the planning board is required to um, make a, a favorable return or a unfavorable return to um, uh, the ordinance committee and to city council as a whole. But whether we choose um, uh, favorable or, or not favorable, it's still just a recommendation from us. Okay. Thank you. Got it. So we are not going to blow up the world tonight. <laughs> are we voting individually on these two or uh, as a package? Only just on number two. Um, I think the first, first one just stays because the council tabled it. It's probably going to be retooled and they would have to send it back to you. Pam, is this open for public comment or no? It is, but I don't see anybody and for clarification um it's the ordinance that is numbered 275 okay anybody with a comment please raise your hand and i don't see them so let's okay. so um planning board members we need um, a motion to recommend favorably or unfavorably? Motion to recommend unfavorably. Second. Okay, roll call, Larry Son? Yes. James Sweeney? Yes. Rita Das? Yes. Tony Gonzalez? Yes. Clarification, recommend unfavorably. All right. Thank you. This brings us to permission to return to ZBA, Amelia Estates, CLM Development Attorney James Burke. Oh, you got Evan and Jim and Charlie. I don't think there's anybody else there. No, I think the community access is there now. Oh, I'll promote them to panelist and then to co-host, although it's a bit late to start taping. Um, counselor? All right, Madam uh, Chairwoman, if you're ready to go, I represent uh, Macy, Macy, uh, and this project in your states is one that the planning board has seen before. We appeared before the uh, zoning board. Excuse me, Mr. Burke, you're, um, you're echoing. There's an echo on your feedback. On mine? Do you have more than one microphone or computer or phone going? A, B, C. Now we can't hear you. I think it was my microphone was back feeding Jim, so I'll, I'll stay on mute unless I'm talking. Okay. Thank you. Uh, 
thank you again. So we appeared before the Zoning Board of Appeals with a request uh, to uh, uh, increase the amount of lots that were authorized uh, as part of the definitive subdivision that was filed with your board. And we sought to have 18 lots. We had a, uh, I think, a constructive hearing before the Zoning Board of Appeals. Uh, I know that the uh, uh, chairman uh, was very involved in the discussion and made uh, certain recommendations. They ultimately denied the request because that was the only request that was before them uh, based on the filing. Uh, and in the suggested uh, modification, it was suggested that we consider reducing one lot uh, and that would have been on lot seven, eight, nine, and 10, uh, and increase the uh, frontage of those particular lots from 125 to something larger. So Evan got to work and uh, the net result is that we in fact have reduced the lots from 18 to 17 and lots seven, eight, and nine, which were 125 feet are now 167, 150, 158.9 and 151.8. In addition, uh, what we have done is a design that I think was recommended by the planning board in initial discussion and included the uh, detention basin on a single lot. Uh, and lastly, in, in as part of that process, they were able to remove the tails on some of the lots so that they're uh, uh, more uh, uh, structured in terms of a rectangular uh, design. So uh, what is before the board is a request to be allowed to return the Zoning Board of Appeals. The standard is that there is in fact been material changes. I think there have been substantial material changes here and we respectfully request that the board consider a, granting the request to be allowed to return the Zoning Board of Appeals. Uh, I know that uh, if you have any additional questions, uh, I'd be happy to answer them. But if you want to look at the decision itself, they specifically in the decision identified that the board suggested a design change. And that's what we are here today with that design change. Very good, thank you. Um, open it up to the planning board for questions. Um, just for everyone else, and this is open to the public too, I'd like to maybe see some of those changes. I, I have not had a chance to review them can we see that somewhere on? Evan, can you Everybody? pull that up? Thank you. And just kind of walk us through that. You had mentioned seven, eight, nine, and 10 are the ones that change along with the uh, retention. Go ahead, Evan. I think you were muted. Okay, there we go. Can you hear me and can you see my screen? Yes. All right, perfect. So this is the plan that we had um, before the Zoning Board of Appeals. And you can see that we had six conforming and 12 reduced frontage lots. And the area of concern was on this side here, that um, 125 you didn't like. And then if you see here, we have our drainage uh, detention basin. It spans two lots through here. So what we did is we took the recommendations of the zoning board, uh, we reduced to 17 lots, um, and then we were able to make an additional uh, conform, so we have seven. And the lots seven through 10, 11 or so, we've increased to at least 150 feet of frontage. And so that was another request that was asked of us. And then you can see the drainage easement here is now completely on one lot. And then um, these lots through here are also squared off a little bit better where before we had some um, trapezoidal shaped lots through here. So now they're much squarer. So Evan, this is Larry again. So that the, the lot that has the retention pond on it, that at one point uh, we just noticed was two lots, now it's one, correct? That's correct. Okay. Are there any lots under 150? There are the lots on the right side over in this area here. We have a few that are 125, 125. Um, if I zoom in, you can see the, the chart here. So lot two, three, four, and six. 
14, 15, um, four, I'm sorry, six. These other ones here, as indicated, are on the cul-de-sac. So as soon as you get past that, they, they do widen up so the actual width uh, accommodates the, the square. I'll also say that all lots um, shown on this plan have adequate area and lot width that we show the requisite rectangle. Other questions? Okay. Yeah, and, I know, uh, you know, when we saw this in the zoning board, it was just a matter of, uh, you know, the, exactly what they have uh, adjusted here and just the concern for the frontage and uh, especially around that retention pond. So that's, that's how it went. All right, very good. Parita, anything? So it's just that um, that lot in the corner, like, you know, bottom left corner, that one uh, increased, I mean, the frontage is increased. That's right. So previously we had two lots across there of 125. Now this lot with the detention basin on it completely complies. It has complying frontage and area and width. So, so on the left hand side of that this road, it used to be six and now you have seven, right? I mean, one, two, three, five, six, seven, eight. It used to be nine, and the, now you have eight there. Yeah, we reduced by one lot on this side. That's right. Okay. Yeah, but some, I, I don't know. I, I still feel that it's not, you know, it's not substantial. It's, it still feel, you know, it's... I mean, that's my uh, my thinking, you know, that's what I feel. I still feel that lot is like, you know, it's not mm. substantially changed. 